All right, we're going to continue talking about polar coordinates today, specifically talking about area under a polar curve and about the length of an arc of a polar curve. Now, this is a little bit different as far as thinking about how the curves work. First of all, think back to when we did area under curve before. Before we learned about the integral, what shape did we use to estimate the area under a curve? What did we use? Rectangles or what? What was the other one? Trapezoids. We use rectangles or trapezoids? Okay, because we are measuring things on in an angle, now our unit of measure is not a rectangle, it's a tiny, tiny, little bitty slice of pizza. Okay? So basically, you know what the mathematical term is for a slice of pizza? Oh, is that a cone? No, that's a, that's a three-dimensional. It's a sector. It's a sector. Okay? So <laughs> the formula for geometry for a sector is this one right here, one-half theta r squared. One-half theta r squared. Theta being the angle in radians that you're finding the area of. However big the, the piece of pizza is, theta is the angle at the bottom, so it's one-half theta r squared. Now, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Let's talk for a minute about a semicircle. What is the radian measure of a semicircle? It's pi, right? Okay. What, and forget that, I mean, put that aside for a minute. What's the area of a semicircle? What's the formula? One half pi r squared. Now, doesn't it fit that format? Didn't we just say the angle theta was pi? Yes. Yeah, so it, it fits the same format. So no matter what the angle is, it's one half theta r squared, and we're going to use that as we do it. So what you have to do is you have to think about finding dividing the region into t tiny, tiny, microscopically thin slices of pizza, okay? So each one has a change in theta. So the theta is, it, the angle is going to be a d theta, all right? And so we have this tiny little slice of pizza right here. It has a radius r, it has an angle theta, and we're going to use that formula from up here to find the area of each slice. Remember when we did the area being circles or area being, you know, triangles. The area of this is one half, and we're going to change it up a little bit, r squared theta. We're going to switch the order of them. The area is the same as one half r squared theta. We want the theta on the end because it's actually, that's the change in theta. All right? Have you all ever seen a woman's fan, the kind that collapses up and then you open it up like that? That is almost built on the exact same structure of what we're talking about. Each individual blade of that fan is a tiny little piece of pizza. And if you open it up, it covers an area that we're talking about, okay? So each one of the slices has a theta um, angle and then it's R units long. So the formula is right down here. So box this in. If you're finding the area of a region you start at one angle, you go to the next angle, and it's one half r squared d theta. See the commonalities between these two formulas? The theta becomes a d theta because every time you move that pizza just a little bit farther, you're changing your angle just a little bit. It has a tiny little measurement in there. So the area of the region is one half integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of r squared d theta based on this formula right here. Okay, that's a formula you're going to have to memorize. All right? So let's practice with it just a little bit. First, we're going to graph and find the area of the rows curve given by this. We looked at a rows curve last class. So take your calculator, please. The first thing I need you to do is because I've cleared out most of the if you picked up a school calculator, I don't even know if we put our calculators in polar yet. Have we? Check your calculator and see if it's in polar form. Yeah. If it's not, it's the mode key. Yeah. I have to change mine because I, I had to change it back for some other stuff I was doing. So we put it in polar form. Go to Y equals and you will see R's instead of Y's. Are we all there? It's very important that you stay with me. Okay. Oh, I'm way down in the dumps here. Let's move this over here. Oh, you can't see over there. Of course not. 
Is that better? A little bit. So type in please 4 sine 3 theta. 4 sine 3 theta. And push zoom 4 please. Zoom 4. And do you see your rose curve right there? So what I want you to do please is sketch that in the gra grid at the bottom. So we have one that comes out here and it comes down to four. It goes down to four, by the way, on the bottom. Oh, that turned out pretty good, free-handed. I'm amazed. I've never done it that well before. Now, if your curve is made up of individual components, instead of finding the area of the whole thing, it's much easier to find the area of, say, one pedal and triple it in this case, since we have three pedals. Okay, this has three pedals. We're going to find the area of one of them. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is find out where the pedal starts and stops. And it seems that they started and stopped at zeros. So we're going to find the zeros of this function. Find zeros to locate where the pedals start and stop. Now, unfortunately, in polar form, there's a lot of limitations to what your calculator can do. You can find zeros on your calculator regular function notation easily, but doing it in polar is a lot harder. So we're going to take our equation, 4 sine 3 theta, and we're going to set it equal to 0 because every pedal starts and stops at 0. It stops and starts when the radius is 0. Okay. Now let's move that up a little bit more. How do we solve this? Divide by four. So sine of three theta equals zero. Who remembers this last class we talked about the significance of the three? Uh, how, many times you go around the how many times you go around the circle. So right now, all we need to do is write it out to the side, three theta equals now tell me where sine is zero. Uh, zero. 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 Uh, pi. That's once around the circle. And then two pi and three pi. That's twice around the circle. And four pi and five pi is three times around the circle. Okay? So the number out front tells you how many times to go around the circle. Then how do you get the theta by itself? Multiply by one third. I'm going to go through and just quickly divide everything by 3 since none of them have denominators yet. So theta equals 0 over 3 is 0, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, dot, dot, dot. And I'll tell you why I'm doing dot, dot, dot in a second. All right? All we need for what we're about to do is one pair of coordinates to let us know where the pedal starts and stops. Okay? So it looks like the pedal starts and stops at 0 and pi over 3. So I'm going to test that to make sure. Because you really, there's a lot of times that testing on your calculator is a good idea. And this is one of them. So what I want you to do is take your calculator, please. Go back to the window. Go to the window and change your T max from 2 pi to pi over 3. We're going to go from 0 to pi over 3 and see if it draws just one pedal because that's what we want it to do. Okay, if you push enter, it's going to turn to a decimal and now just push graph. Does pi over 3, 0 to pi over 3, make it draw just one? Yeah. Yes. Okay, now don't do what I'm about to do, just watch mine for a minute. I'm going to slow mine down. Okay, and what it's going to do is I want to talk about how it actually builds the area. When we do area under a rectangular curve, it's just rectangle, 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 all close together. Kind of colors it in. You can actually make the calculator do that. But in this case, what you have to think of is, oh, that didn't slow it down enough. Let me go back and do it again, 0.01. I want you to see how as you go around, you, you've got to think about the fact, or think about this picture. Have you ever taken, think about taking a piece of chalk okay 
and either seen somebody lay it on a piece of paper or lay it on the ground and just kind of rotate it like this. Do you see what I'm saying? That's kind of what's happening here. We're going from right to left and we are, we've got a piece of chalk with an edge of the origin and an edge on the edge of the graph and we're kind of rotating it around and coloring in the petal. It has the ability to change in length based on how far out you're going, okay? So the area is being comprised as you work your way around the petal, okay? So stop right there. That's pi over, pi over three. Works perfectly. Do you see how that would work as you kind of sweep around? It's a sweeping motion. Okay, we're going to need that much in a little bit. So we'll look at it again. But zero to pi over three works. So those are going to be our limits of integration, okay? So one petal is area is going to be one half integral zero to pi over three and it's going to be r squared so four sine three theta squared d theta that's how you type that's how you write it down one half zero to pi over three r squared d theta that will give me the area that just that one petal it just drew Okay, now with the calculator is how we're going to do this and we're going to use math 9 and we're going to use some shortcuts as we can. So take your calculator, but as you do these, remember it's one half integral. So we're going to always type 0.5 first. So 0.5 math 9 on, all the, on this worksheet the whole time, 0.5 as you're doing area. So it's 0 up to pi over 3. Okay. We're going to use the Y1 feature. Remember how we used to put in like Y1 minus Y2 sometimes? We're going to do the same thing here. If you, what do you push to get Y1? Alpha and trace. Alpha and trace. Now notice that because we're in polar, instead of Y1, Y2, it gives me R1 and R2. And since my equation's already in R1, push R1 squared. There it is right there. You don't have to worry about typing it all in, okay? and then right arrow, and then push dx, and it'll give it the d theta that it needs. Yes? How did you, so did you, you got zero and pi over three because that was two, that was the two, okay. Those were the zeros, okay. I knew a pedal always started and stopped with the radius of zero, okay. So that's why I used those. The first two I found, I tested them on the calculator to make sure it drew a full pedal, and it did. So you always do the first two? Yeah, you could do any two, but I just picked the first two because they're nice, nice numbers. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Could you kind of look the calculator off of the equation you were wondering why? Sure. Okay. Push enter. What do you get? You get four point one eight nine if you round it. Okay. Now that's the area of one petal. That's this one petal. So how do I find the total area? Multiply by, Multiply by three. And so times three equals 12.566. Okay, how did you get the R1? Uh, alpha trace gives you the R1. Alpha trace and enter. Okay, questions? Are we good? All right, turn to the back of this page, please. Now the next one, I'm going to be honest with you, first time I didn't, did it, I had a real tough time picturing what was happening. But once I understood the sweeping motion like I was talking about with the chalk, it helped me to picture what was going on. Find the area of the region lying between the inner and outer loops of the limason. Y, R equals 2 sine theta minus 1. And they give you a picture here. So the shaded area is what I want to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is put that into y, um, into y equals and just see how it graphs. So 2 sine theta minus 1 is what we want. Oh, good, real happy place for that. All right, mine is set on the slower graph. So I'm going to put it back on the fast graph the way yours is going to go. And I need to set mine back to 2 pi. Hang on just a minute. Yeah, you all need to set yours back to 2 pi as well. Make sure that your theta max is 2 pi again. Otherwise, you aren't going to get the whole thing. It's going to stop halfway through the drawing. 
okay? So pay attention to what draws first and where it starts drawing, okay? So look at it. So we're going to push graph. Okay, what did it draw first? The little inner loop. I'm going to call that the inner loop. Yes, and it started over at negative 1 and went did kind of the inner loop and then it did the outer loop. Okay, so if you think about your imaginary little piece of chalk, it would draw the inner loop in first. Then as it draws the outer loop, it's going back over the inner loop again. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Because of the fact that the chalk would go from the center all the way out to the edge. So it's going to basically color the center twice. Okay? So it'll sweep around and do the inner circle, and then it'll sweep around and do the whole thing, which means it's going to do the inner circle again. So if we want to remove that area, we actually have to remove it twice. Okay? So the area that we're going to be looking at is going to be the entire graph minus the inner loop times 2. The entire graph minus the inner loop times 2 because it doubles over itself. <clears throat> yes? Could you kind of like explain what you mean by that? Like I understand that like you said it doubles over itself but there's still like an outer loop that's bigger. Are you saying that because it's a loop, it's going to go back to the smaller one? Or? No, what I'm saying is this, is as it draws this thing, it's going to draw the inner loop first. So it's colored that in, okay? Then as it draws the outer loop, it's coloring in everything from the center out. So it's coloring over what I've already colored. Oh, okay. So it's got a double color basically on there. So when I, when I have to remove this, I have to remove it twice because it counts the area twice for that loop. It's kind of interesting how that does it, but it's the fact that it colors over it twice is what helped me to understand what was going on. <clears throat> so notice that the loop starts and stops at zero, the inner loop. So we've got to set our equation equal to zero again. So 2 sine theta minus 1 equals zero. First thing we do, set the equation equal to zero again because the inner loop's radius so their inner loop starts and stops at zero. So solving, what do I do? Add one. Add one. Two, two sine theta equals one. Sine theta equals one half. Where does this occur? Pi. Pi over six. Pi over six is my first one. Okay, the sign has to be, let's, let's think about this for a minute. Sign is positive here. Can you see what I just drew? Yes. Oh, it's 11 pi over 6. Up here, down at the bottom, or over on the quadrant 2? Quadrant 2. Quadrant 2. That's 5 pi over 6. That's 5 pi over 6. Okay, let's test it. Let's always test it to be sure. So we take our graph again, go to the window, change our limits to what we just found pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 and see if that makes it draw the loop. This is a great way to, t you know, make sure you're doing your mental math right. Pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. <clears throat> see if that works. Push graph. Does that draw the inner loop? Yeah. Perfectly. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Now, what did it take to draw the whole thing? 2 pi. Two pi. So the whole thing's integral is going to be 0 to 2 pi, but the inner loop is going to be from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to write it in simpler, in simple terms here. We're going to integrate 0 to 2 pi, the entire, entire graph, minus 2 times the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of the inner loop. Okay. Well, actually, this is the entire graph. Let's, let's change this now that I wrote that. Because this will give me the inner loop. It's two times the entire graph again. And that gives me the inner loop. Yeah, better said. 
I did this last class just on a whim, and I like the way it works. Just writing in kind of ma kind of half math, half English, what I'm doing. So we're going to say that the area is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Oops, what did I forget? The 1 half, good. 1 half integral of the whole graph, which is 2 sine theta minus 1 squared d theta. Remember, you got to square it. So that's the whole graph. That'll give me the whole area minus 2 times the integral for the inner loop, which is half integral pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, same equation, 2 sine theta minus 1 squared d theta. After you write all that down, I want you to think about it and see if that makes sense to you. I wrote it in words above, now we wrote it in math. One half, first, the first one is the, will give us the sweep of the entire limousine, and then we have to take out two inner loops. So two times the half integral, which is the inner loop. Are we good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, type that in your calculator. You can do it all in one line. <laughs> yes? So the first one is a big circle. Yes. And then the second one is a small circle? Well, the, the big circle includes the inner loop. Oh, the whole thing. It, the whole thing. And the second like one it is just the inner loop. Okay. So we have to do the whole sweep, which will double over on the inner loop, and then we take off the double inner loop. Okay? So what's happening with the two and the one half? I can just cancel those out, right? So I'm going to do that before so, I type it in. So why do you put a, a two in front of the because remember, the inner loop is double colored. As it draws, it goes over the inner loop twice, oh. as far as the area is concerned. Okay. So we have to subtract it off twice to make it totally gone. So 0.5 math 9, 0 to 2 pi. And then we do the r squared, alpha trace, r1 squared d theta minus just math 9 because I canceled the 2 and the half. Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, alpha trace, enter, squared, d, theta. And we get 8.337, 8.338. Are we getting that answer? Okay. 8.338 is the area. Square units. You want to put units on it? Units squared. Okay. For individual graphs, just integrate it. If you have, you know, I want a piece of this taken out, or the next one is I have two graphs, one on top of the other, I want to find out how much they, you know, what's the shaded region. We have to figure that out. All right, now take a look at number three. The visualization is one of the hardest things to do here, and it took me a while even as, as I was going back over this. Find the area that is inside this cardioid and outside the circle, okay? So the shaded region is what we want. You may want to draw in a dotted line where this, you know, this kind of wave thing is going on because that's the bottom half of that limousine or that cardioid, excuse me. Okay. Do you remember way back when you were learning finding area under curves sometimes, or just finding area of unusual shapes? Sometimes you would divide it into like a triangle and a square, and then you would add them all up that way. We kind of got to think the same way here, but we've got to think of it in polar thinking, and that's what makes it challenging. Okay. Does anybody have any ideas on how to divide this thing up so we can find the area? Well, should you take the bottom, like how you drew the dotted line? Mm -hmm. Should you, um, like, this, the section that you, like, sectioned off with the dotted line, should you, like, use that as, like, a sector? Possibly so, okay? Let me do this, too. I'm going to draw in, the points of crossing are very important, okay? And we're going to look at those in a minute. 
I'm going to draw in a radius there and there. Okay. <clears throat> if I sweep, if I had a fan that opened, or if I used the chalk analogy and went from this right hand point around to the left hand point on the outer curve, would I get everything but the bottom of this cardioid? Yes. yes. And I don't want the bottom of the cardioid, do I? So basically it would give me a piece from here to here around. Agreed? Okay. So if I do that, how do I get rid of the circle part on top of it? Well, I mean, it's already covered when you go around. Right? right. It's already covered. So when I go around, this whole thing up here would be colored in. But all of it would be colored in. So how can I remove the circle? Would I add it on or would I subtract it off? Subtract it off. I would subtract it off. So let me show you. Take your calculator and let's go ahead and put in the 3 plus 2 sine theta. Oh, we have to do one thing before we do that. Okay. Actually, well, let's just go ahead and graph the whole thing first. We need to go from 0 to 2 pi so we see the whole thing. Okay, make sure your t-step's at point 0.1. Let me move this up into better visual range. Okay. So let's push graph and see what we see. So there's the whole thing right there, 0 to 2 pi. Agreed? Okay. I don't want it to draw the whole thing. I want it to draw everything but the bottom. Okay. So how do I find out where to make it start and stop so it doesn't draw this part in the middle? I, I'm going to be changing my t-step, but the way I do it is I set the two equations equal to each other because where they cross is these two points. Okay. So let's take our paper and let's set the two r's equal to each other. 3 plus 2 sine theta equals 2. We set the two r's equal to each other. We want to find out where they cross. Because those two points right there is where we want it to start and stop. So to solve, subtract, subtract the 3. 2 sine theta equals negative 1. Divide by 2, sine of theta equals negative 1 half. Okay, I need, I need picture. Where are sines negative? 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. And 11 pi over 6. Agreed. Okay, now, so here's what I want you to do. I want to take, and I'm going to go ahead and change my window from 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6 because that's where we said that they cross. Okay, take a look at what it graphs. What did it graph? The part, that we don't want. The part we don't want. Okay, so how do we make it graph the other part? Mm, kind of. Well, there's an easier way. We need to rename 11 pi over 6. Mm -hmm. uh, negative, negative pi over if we make it negative pi over 6, that means it's going down before it starts, and then it's going around. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if we rename this negative pi over 6, it's instead of starting here, it's going to start here and then go around to 7 pi over 6. So let's try that window. Negative pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6. Push graph. Did that draw what I wanted it to? Yes. So what you can do is think about there's a radius coming. Actually, I can do this with a marker. There's a radius coming out here, there's a radius coming out here, and that whole thing is colored in. That's what it just found, the, it, that's what it would find the area of uh, if I integrated that. Okay? So now what I need to do is remove the circle. If I integrate the circle from the same start and stop point, it'll pull that out. If I subtract them. Are you kind of picturing what I'm doing? Yes. 
Okay, Jason's already graphed it on his, so let's, <laughs> let's do this. The second equation was what? What's the equation of that circle? What does it say on your paper? Just R equals just two. two. Okay, keep your window the same. Graph it. There we go. Isn't that cool? So that's the part that we want the area of. I just put in R2, go to the y equals again. In R2, the equation of the circle is two. It tells us that on the paper. Okay? Now, what have we always said about when you have two curves to worry about? Top minus bottom. You remember that? So that's the way we're going to approach this. We're going to do top curve minus bottom curve. Okay? Or you can do outer squared minus inner squared. You can think of it that way, too, since they're round. All right? So let's pull this aside. So let's write down in simpler terms what we're doing. We're doing the integral from negative pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6 of the cardioid minus, are the limits of integration the same for the circle? Yes. So I could do the circle in the same integral. Does that make sense? Since the limits of integration are the same? Okay, now that we've got it set up, we've got to remember we've got to use the formula to do this. So this is not real math, that's just thinking math. The area is going to be one half the integral of the limits that I said, negative pi over six to pi, seven pi over six, the cardioid equation, which is the first equation, three plus two sine theta squared, because that's the formula, one half integral r squared, d theta, you could do d theta and a separate integral for the other one, but we're going to put them all into one. And so it's going to be minus the, the second equation, which is 2 squared, and then d theta. So it's cardioid minus circle. And they have to be squared. That's the formula. Cardioid squared minus circle squared. If that helps you remember I'm going to do that. Cardioid squared minus circle squared. Because it's always squared. It helps me remember. <clears throat> so that goes in the calculator. Let's see what happens. So we go to math, point 0.5 math 9. Negative pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6. And we're going to do, now this was R1, so I can use R1 squared minus R2 squared, just like we used to do Y1 and Y2. So set alpha trace R1 squared minus alpha trace go down for R2 squared D theta. Let me move that over a little bit so you can see it better. So that is exactly what it says over here, but in simpler terms. Now push enter and see what you get. And it comes out to be 24.187. <coughs> All right, now we're gonna take the same two curves, we're gonna find a different area. We're gonna find the area that's shaded here, which is the circle and the lemason, kind of some overlap there. And the lines are there for a reason, okay? So, tell me what you see as far as finding the area of that shaded part. What do you see, Elijah? Is it like kind of progression that we just did? Mm. So, instead of like, we did negative pi, we would use 11 pi and 7 pi per six and add it to it, sir? I never thought of doing it that way. Very clever. Very clever. Actually, yes, it's the, it is honestly the reverse of what I was going to do. Good job, Elijah. Okay, so he said it's kind of the reverse of what we did before. We're, we're going from here to here, and we want this piece of it, don't we? We want the bottom. And we said this crossing point here is 7 pi over 6, and this one here is 11 pi over 6, okay? If we integrate from 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6 of the outer curve, we're going to get that. Okay? 
So what exactly comprises the rest of it? What curve is that inside of? The circle or the cardioid? The top part. This part isn't, well, it's, in it's inside of both, right? Mm -hmm. But it is completely inside of the circle, yes? If I integrate the circle from here around to here, would I get all of this? Yeah. So basically, I'm going to add this part of the circle to that part of the, is that what you were, were saying to do? Yeah. We're going to add this part of the circle to that part of the cardioid. Okay. So we're going to add the top part, top of the circle, plus the bottom of the cardioid. So basically, that's what we're going to do to find the area. Area is the top of the circle and the bottom of the cardioid added together. So let's build this. We're going to integrate from where to where to get the top of the circle. I have to start here and sweep left, yes. And so I have to start at negative pi over 6 and go to where? Uh, seven, pi. 7 pi over 6. So going from here, which is also negative pi over 6, around to here will give me that part of the circle. So that happens to be 2 squared d theta with a 1 half out front that I almost forgot again. That's the circle part. That's the circle part. That's the top of the circle. And we're going to add to that. I have to do this in a separate integral because the limits of integration are different. One half integral where to where? Seven pi over six to eleven pi over six of the other curve. The three plus two sine theta squared d theta. R1 and R2. And this comes out to be 10.370. Yes? So basically we're just like doing the integral to take away the area that we don't want and adding it to find the area that we want. In this case, we're actually adding two areas together that we want. Let me go back to the picture, okay? The top, the, the, un, the part that I have not shaded, that's shaded up there, is three quarters of a circle, pretty much, okay? So I, I integrate from here around to here, and what it does is it creates a million little tiny pie pieces that go all the way around the circle, and I'm adding those all up with this formula, okay? Or with this formula, actually. Then I gotta find the area down here, which is even more little pie pieces, but their outer edge is this curve. So I'm integrating from here to here, all of my pie pieces being added together, and then I'm adding those two quantities to each other to make the shaded part. Last time, I had a big one and I cut out a piece. That was what was different with the previous question because of the overlap, okay? So you're just gonna have to kind of look at it. You know, there's been situations when you were in you know elementary middle school you had say you had a graph or something like this and you had a region that looked like that okay let's say you had to find the area of that this is back a long time ago well some people would draw a line across the top and do the whole rectangle minus that triangle up there and some people would say oh no I don't want to do that I want to do this I'm gonna draw a line right here and I've got a square at the bottom and a triangle on top and add them together so you're still finding the same area, you're just approaching it two different ways. In this case, we're adding two areas together. The other time, we subtracted stuff off. So it really depends on the problem and however you see it is the easiest way to go, okay? Any other questions? Yes, sir? So the thing we actually found the area of is the little triangle part? It's all of it. This, this integral here found the area of the top part of the circle. This integral here from 7 pi over 6 to down across the bottom found the triangle at the bottom. And then I added them together. Okay, we're going to move on to something a little bit different, so turn to the next page, please. All right. The calculator is very limited when it comes to polars, okay? That is why we have to find our crossing points or our zeros by hand. Usually in a calculator, you can do second trace intersect when you're in regular function mode, but that doesn't work with polars. You have to do it by hand. 
And sometimes, even by hand, you don't find them all. So let me show you how this works. So take a look at these two curves. We've got one of the loop-de-loop -loop curves on its side, a limason, and then we have a circle on top of it. So we've got a dotted line and a circle. How many crossing points do you see? I see three points of intersection, agreed? Let's mathematically calculate the intersections and see if that gives us all three of them. So I want to set these two equal to each other. It says find the intersection point. So watch. 2 minus 4 cosine theta equals 2. Just set them equal to each other and solve it. What's the first? Subtract what? 2. So negative 4 cosine theta equals what? 0. Divide by negative 4, cosine theta equals 0. So where does cosine equals 0? Pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay. All right. That's now pi halves. This is a this is almost like a unit circle. Where, which of the pi crossing points do you think is the pi halves crossing point? Zero two. Zero two, the one at the top. This is the pi halves one. Okay. Where's the three pi over two one? Zero negative two. Down at the bottom. This is the three pi over two. But wait a minute. There's another crossing point there. Okay. It doesn't show up in the math because it's a point with a negative radius. Okay. We assume that the radius was 2. This is also the circle of r equals negative 2. If I change this to a negative 2, watch what happens. 2 minus 4 cosine theta equals negative 2. Negative 4 cosine theta equals negative 4. Cosine theta equals 1. Where does cosine equal 1? Uh, at 0. Not at pi, just at 0. At pi, it's negative 1, right? So, if the radius is negative 2 and I'm going out 0 degrees, that would be negative 2 and no rotation, which is right there. Okay? So, sometimes your math will only give you part of the picture. This answer shows up if the radius is negative 2. So, why am I saying this? Because if you're looking for intersection points, not only do the math, but look at the picture. On the AP exam, they will either give you a graph or they will give you a calculator for these. There's no way to do them without. Okay? So, p be aware. Be aware that there might be more crossing points than you mathematically solve for. Because of the fact that we can write polar coordinates so many different ways. Okay? Questions? All right, the last thing we're going to look at is length of a curve, okay? We did length of parametric curves as dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, okay? In a square root sign, integral from t1 to t2. We already did that. Now we're going to look at it in polar terms to make it a little bit easier. Now we could do this, dx d theta and dy d theta, but that's more work. That means we've got to change our r's to x's and y's and do all sorts of stuff. So there's an easier way to do it that's not on this page, you need to turn to the back. Everybody turn to the back. At the top of the back side. The arc length of the polar graph from alpha, this is an alpha by the way, alpha, that's the Greek letter alpha, and this is the Greek letter beta. From alpha to beta, A to B. They change them to that because Greek letters tend to represent angles more often than A to, a to B you think of on the x-axis. This is not that, it's angle sizes. The formula is over here to the right. This is the one you're gonna use right here. It is the integral from alpha to beta, those are both angles, of the square root of r squared plus its derivative squared d theta. So r squared plus its derivative squared, okay? That's the formula for finding the length of some polar curve. So look at number eight. The arithmetic spiral given by r equals theta and the logarithmic spi spiral is given by r equals e to the pi, o excuse me, theta over pi are shown in the figure below. Find the difference in their lengths from zero to two pi. How much longer is one than the other? So we have to do them one at a time. So we're gonna call this one one and this one two and we're gonna do each one individually. 
So we're going to find the length of 1 first. Now in order to find the length of 1, we need r squared and we need dr d theta squared. So let's write down what we've got. It says r equals theta. My question to you is what is dr d theta? It is 1. It is 1. Okay. If that's kind of confusing to you, think of it this way. Change r and theta to y and x. If y equals x, what is dy dx? dx dx. Is dy dx is just 1, right? Or dx dx, which is 1. Exactly. So there we go. There's our two components that we need. So our length L is going to be the integral, and it told us to go from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of r, which is theta squared, plus its derivative squared. I shouldn't have made that quite so long. Let's fix that because I need room for my d theta, which does not go under the, under the square root sign. So type that in the calculator and see what you get. Now there's no one half in front of these. These are just straight integrals. 0 to 2 pi. Make sure you put your square root in because I keep forgetting. Theta squared plus 1 squared d theta. And I get L equals 21.256 for the standard arithmetic spiral. Okay? Now we're going to do the other one, which is a little trickier because of the way it's written. So, number two, my formula is r equals e to the theta over pi. Now the question is, what's the derivative of that? Copy-paste. Copy -paste. Very good. So e to the theta over pi times the derivative of the exponent. And it is 1 over pi. We did one the other day that had a t over pi in it. Do you all remember that? And we figured out that it was 1 over pi. So times 1 over pi. There we go. You could put the whole thing over pi instead. Yes. So our L is equal to our integral, 0 to 2 pi. Square root sign, because I keep forget I forgot first period to put square root sign on this one. So parentheses e to the theta over pi squared plus since this is times one over pi, I'm just gonna put it over pi. So e to the theta over pi all over pi in a parentheses squared, like so, d theta. Take a look at that. All right, let's type this little guy in. There it is. So we get 21.064. Pretty close to the other one, which I figured they would be considering the drawing. They're almost the same size. Okay, so did I answer the question they asked? No. <laughs> no. What do I need to do to these two values? Subtract, Subtract them. So 21.256 minus 21.064. is 0 0.192. That's my difference. I'm not doing number 9. I ran into it. So don't worry about it running over in the, that area as well. All right. Mark out the bottom half of this page because that is surface area revolution. We are not doing that. That's always a good feeling to say, yes, I don't have to learn that. <laughs> not now. Maybe in college. It's up to your professors. And we are done for today.